Ever wonder what makes things get so cold? Today, we're gonna find out. Yeah. Want some iced tea? I'm good, thanks, man. It's snippy in here. What's going on, everybody? I'm Josh. And I'm Van. We've also got with us today the Bat Computer, Penny One. Greetings. <laughs> And welcome to Batman Science Lab. We're here to test the science behind Batman's crime-fighting technology. We've been learning all about his tech as members of the Night Watch, Penny One's new program where people like you and me from all around the world get to practice honing our skills to be everyday heroes. That's right. Being Batman, you have to know the ins and outs of your tech as well as the tech of your enemies. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Hmm, let's see. We're talking about the science of cold. We must be learning about Mr. Freeze. Nailed it, exactly. Now, Mr. Freeze is a supervillain who uses science to his advantage. But if we break down the basic science behind his tech, we can understand how Batman is able to defend himself using his own gear. Like his thermal armor. Wait, what? What is that? Hey, Penny One, can you bring up information about Batman's thermal armor for Josh here? As it is, Batman very often finds himself up against supervillains who know how to really turn up the heat, or conversely, give the cold shoulder. Or sometimes, Batman's investigations take him to rather extreme environments. But whether Batman is on thin ice or in hot water, having a suit that can deal with either is a must. So Batman designed this armor to keep his body at a comfortable temperature so that he can always get the job done. It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah, that is pretty cool. But speaking of cool, let's talk about what cold really means. When we think of cold, we think of it as a thing, right? Something that we measure how cold something is. When in fact, cold is just the absence of something. Heat, and heat basically is just stored up energy that is created when molecules move really, really fast. So the slower molecules are moving, the less heat they have, and the more cold they are? Yes, exactly. Actually, do you mind if I borrow your drink really quickly? Sure. Thank you so much, it's very nice. Everything in this cup is made of matter, so it's molecules. The molecules in the liquid are moving all around. So that means they have a fair amount of energy and heat, which is making them a state of liquid. On the other hand, the molecules in the ice are hardly moving, so that means they have very little energy or heat, and that's why they're a solid. So how is the ice making my tea cold? Oh, that's because of something called conductivity. Conductivity is the transfer of energy between molecules, in this case, heat energy. In this glass, heat is slowly being exchanged, kind of like the molecules are trading it around between themselves. The heat or energy from the liquid molecules, it's transferring over to the ice molecules, and that's why it's melting, because the molecules are moving around, and they're starting to heat up from all that energy. Because the ice is taking all that heat and energy from the liquid, the T molecules are losing that energy. That's what's making them colder. Yes, that's why when you wanna make something cool, you gotta surround it with something way colder, which is why we invented refrigerators. So, does Mr. Freeze use ice in his technology? Actually, water wouldn't be very helpful to Mr. Freeze. See, every element has a different temperature at which the molecules heat up. For water, the temperature's pretty low. So it freezes easily, but it also melts easily. Exactly. If you're Mr. Freeze, he needs something way colder than ice to circulate in his insulated suit. In fact, he needs an element that is so cold, it can freeze almost anything that's around it. In our world, that would be... Liquid, liquid nitrogen! nitrogen. Woohoohoo! Look at that. Mr. Freeze would love liquid nitrogen because the temperature for it to change state is super low. How low? Negative 360 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. And that's just to change it from a gas to a liquid. And I thought that glass of iced tea was cold. <laughs> How can Batman use what we know about conductivity to protect himself from the cold? Well, let's see. If Batman wants to stop the cold from taking all his heat energy, then he needs to protect himself with a suit that'll stop or slow down conductivity. Yes, that is a great observation, Van. That's exactly what we're gonna experiment with today. Before we start, I have to remind everyone that I am a professional, and liquid nitrogen should be handled with extreme caution, so do not try this at home. All right, let's see what happens when we put something into the extreme cold, like our Batman action figure. But first, Van, do you mind taking the temperature for Batman for me? Yeah, no problem. Amazing. 75 degrees. 75 degrees, great. So that's the base temp for Batman. So we're gonna see how much the liquid nitrogen affects its temperature. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, snap. <laughs> wow. Look at that, he is so frosty. Well, let's check his temperature. Okie dokie. Whoa, 
That's below negative 55 degrees. Oh my, negative 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Now our temperature gun, that's the lowest it's gonna go. Yeah. And that's as cold as Batman's gonna get all day. That's amazing. Our mission is to try to find a way to keep our friend Batman here warm. And to keep something warm, you need insulation. Insulation is just trapping heat with a barrier that makes it really hard to exchange energy. So it keeps the heat from escaping out and the cold from coming in. Let's use one of these materials here to try and keep Batman insulated. How about the aluminum foil? Maybe a type of metal will slow down the transfer of energy enough to keep the heat in and the cold out. All right, I like the sound of that. Let's try it. All right. Okay, let's wrap them up. I'm just gonna make them into a little ball. Okay. Hopefully that'll keep him insulated. Yeah, 100%. Do you think he's nice and comfortable? I, I would be. That looks like a very comfortable aluminum ball. Well, it's not as cool as his actual thermal armor, but it's close enough. All right, are you ready, Batman? Oh yeah, Batman's always ready for anything. He is in the tongs. Tell me when to drop him. Now. All right, let's take him out. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. This looks pretty cold. Okay, I'm gonna set it down. And we're gonna unwrap our batsicle. <laughs> it doesn't feel too cold, that's a good sign. Okie doke, here we go. Yeah, let's check his temperature. All right, what do we got, sir? That's pretty cold, 13 degrees. 13 degrees Fahrenheit, okay, what do you think? Well, I think we need to find something that insulates Batman better. Yeah, it worked, but just not as well as we wanted it to work. Okay, let's see here, how about the rubber balloon. Yep, that might work. I'm thinking that if a balloon can hold a bunch of air for a really long time, then it'll be pretty good at holding the warm air in with Batman too. That's a pretty good hypothesis. Let's uh, warm Batman up to his original temp and we'll try it. Well, I think Batman's pretty secure. Okay. Can you tie him off? Yeah, me? you got it, buddy. I think rubber's gonna be really bad at conducting energy. So I think Batman's gonna stay pretty warm. Oh, okay, that's a pretty good analysis there. Balloon. Is nice and tight. We are airtight. Nice. Gloves are coming on. All righty. Tongs. Sir Van, are you ready? I'm as ready as I can. I like that. Okay, here we go. Let me know when to drop. And now. All right, here we go. I think it's ready. Okay. Woo, look at that. Look Ooh, at all this. Wow. I don't even want to say steam coming off of him. Okay. <laughs> That looks super cold. Okay, let's check his temperature. Okay, what are we looking at? Whoa, negative two degrees. Negative two degrees, that's so cold. Oh my gosh. That's way colder than the tin foil. I don't think Batman would survive. It turns out rubber's actually very good at absorbing and conducting energy. That's true, so I guess we could effectively remove rubber balloons from the list, so that leaves us with our styrofoam cups. But how is a styrofoam cup gonna work? It's so light and breakable. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to find out. All right, go ahead and drop him in that styrofoam cup. Sounds good. Let's drop him in. Let me know. Now. Okay, here we go. Oh. All right. Okay, let's see what it is. Yeah. Whoa, 52 degrees. Wow, we started at 75 and now we're only at 52 degrees. That's incredible. Yeah, he's a little cold, but yeah. way better than anything else we've tried. It's true. Oh man, and to think the only barrier was air and styrofoam. How did that work so well? Well, styrofoam is made up of thousands of little air pockets that are surrounded by a plastic material that doesn't conduct heat very well. I thought air would be super conductive. Mm, well, let's think about it this way, right? Air is so spread out and it would take a bunch of energy to disperse and spread that energy to the molecules. So air is what we call a poor conductor of heat. And you know what? I think Batman should make his thermal armor out of styrofoam. Well, actually, Batman's thermal armor has a honeycomb structure, which is like the air pockets in styrofoam, but it's way more durable. He also has copper wiring throughout it to heat it up or cool it down by using a water system. Because as we've learned, water is an amazing conductor of energy. Wow, that's awesome. Batman really knows how to use his scientific knowledge to his advantage. Man, excellent experiments today, Van. You truly have the mind of a scientist. Thanks, Josh. You know, after seeing what liquid nitrogen can do today, I wouldn't want to stand up to Mr. Freeze. Well, you know, that's why Batman is constantly experimenting with new materials for his bat suit, exactly like we were doing today. Thanks everyone for joining us on Batman Science Lab. You can find more awesome Batman content here on the DC Kids channel. In the meantime, stay warm out there. Or cool. I'll cheers to that. Ooh, it's hot.